Hello everybody, I'm Vitek from Varisol Studio and I would like to welcome you to another Blender tutorial. Some time ago I made transition effect inspired by Mystique from X-Men. Since then Blender and animation nodes changed a lot. So this is then update for Blender 2.80 and animation nodes 2.1. Link for the animation nodes is in the description. Let's not waste any more time and jump right into the Blender. Start with empty scene and create just one scale. It can be just slightly edited simple plane with solidify and subsurf modifier. And if you want to make your life easier, make the scale along the Z axis. Then put three different materials on it. One for each side and one for the rim. To make clear which side is which, change the viewport display color of those materials. Now back in the solidify modifier, set proper offset for the material slots. Also if you want some more advanced motion, add a simple deform modifier and set it to bend. We will play with the angle later, now keep it at zero. Now add an object you want to cover with scales. For simplicity I will use cube with 4 levels of subsurf. Nice smooth shading and switch to some better layout. This looks nice, just change the bottom editor to animation nodes. As with the previous versions, first thing you want to do is change the auto execution from always to only when something is changed. And we can finally start making the animation magic. I want a lot of scales, so first node will be object instancer. Pick the scale, hide the original in the viewport and check the copy full object, because we want to edit the modifiers for each individual scale. Well, how many of them do we need? I want to place one scale to every vertex and also to every polygon center to get a nice pattern. Both of these informations can be found in mesh input node. Choose the cube and check the use modifiers, so we don't have to apply the subsurf. The vertex locations and polygon centers are already there, but I want to combine them to just one long list of vectors. It's easy with list combine vector. Rename it to something reasonable to stay organized. If you now try to plug the vector list to the number of instances, animation nodes will automatically create a get length node. Well, now we have the proper amount of scales, but they are in the center. So next node will be object transport out. Connect the objects from instancer and activate all three axes of location. We can directly connect our places to that. Tada! Scales are where they should be, but they are way too big. Activate also the scaling option in the transform output and feed it with vector from value node. Set the value to something small like 0.12. Now we need to solve the rotation, so activate also the rotation in the transform output. The default orientation should be along the normals. Select the mesh input node and in the end panel we can add more outputs. So activate vertex and polygon normals. Combine them the same way as the locations. Now we need to convert the normals to rotations. Use the direction to rotation node. Plug the normals to the directions and then connect the rotations. Everything seems to work just fine for now. This is a good time to add an empty object that will control the motion of our scales. Before I will continue with the node 3, I will create two new triggers for the node updates. Both will be monitoring a property on our controller empty object. One for location and one for rotation. Also for better performance I will lower the subserve levels on the cube. Well let's continue with the most obvious scale motion, the rotation. Just plug an Euler math node ahead of the rotation output. If you play with the X value of the added vector, you should see the result we are looking for. Just not for all the scales at once. We want this value to be controlled by the empty. Add an object controller fell off, change it to directional and pick the empty object. If we now evaluate the fall off with the fall off evaluate node, we get a value from 0 to 1. We need to specify what is this value based on. And it's based on the relative location of the scales, so choose location, check the list option because there is a lot of them, 
and plug the places to the locations. Well, now the strengths are from 0 to 1, but we need a value from minus 90 to 90. So another node for that, the number map range node. The input is from 0 to 1, that's ok, but set the output main and max to minus 90 and 90. Finally we need to convert this value to rotation. So at an combine Euler and finally connect all together. Don't forget to check use degree. Try to move the empty to see if it works. For me it does the opposite of what I want, so I will invert the object control follow. If you want a sharper edge on the transition or just more control over the shape, try to interpolate the map range node. Now I will edit the size of the scales. We have a node already that sets the size for all of them. So as with the rotations, I will just duplicate the map range node and plug it to it. The sizes are now insane, so let's set the right values. Inputs are still from 0 to 1, but the outputs now should be just from 0 to 0.12. And I don't want the size to just get bigger, I want a transition from 0 to full size and then back to 0 again. Add a new interpolation from curve and change the shape like this. Start and end is on 0 and the middle is on top. The rest is as you want. So far everything works fine, but I don't really like the behavior when you rotate the empty object. The scales are always facing up, maybe that's exactly what you want, but I would like them to face the direction of the empty. It's relatively simple, first we need a rotation of the empty, so object transform input. And then we change the rotation to direction. And finally we plug the new direction to the guide of the node that makes rotations from the normals. The animation nodes tree starts to be pretty complicated and maybe it's enough for you, but I would like to make the final touch with the bending. Keep in mind that when you crank up the subsurf back again, the bending will have a major impact on performance. Well, it will be controlled as everything else, so start with duplicating the map range node. The outputs should now be minus 45 and 45 degrees, but the bend modifier wants radians, so I will make some quick math with the result. Just multiply it with pi divided by 180. Now we need to find where to plug it. If you don't know if there is a node for it, use attribute output. There you can find everything in Blender. Connect the object from the instancer and check the multiple values. Then connect the values. Now we need to tell where the value should be modified. Select one scale, look to the bend modifier and right click on the angle. Pick the copy data path and paste it with Ctrl+V V to the attribute output node. Ta-da! We are done with the animation nodes. Just a heads up, in the beta when you try to render the animation there is a really high chance that the blender just crashes. So when you will be ready to render, bake the animation nodes to keyframes first. You can do it in overview, bake to keyframes. Then just turn off the auto execution. The last thing you may want to know is how to set up the materials. For that, switch to the shading tab and select one of the scales. Set the materials however you wish. And when you are done, make node group from them. Leave out just the material output. Then select the main object and create a new material. Here place both of these groups and mix them with mix shader. Add a texture coordinate input. Select the empty object and separate the object coordinates to X, Y and Z. Then you can use the Z coordinates as factor for mixing of the materials. It's also nice to run it through the color ramp node. In the time of recording, the EV can't use coordinates from another object, so you have to use cycles for render. Well, and that's all. You can blend between any two materials you want, so I will do the rest in time lapse. In the end, set up a nice lighting and render the result. Thank you for watching, and till the next time, happy blending!